Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. So last time, what were we talking about last time? Functions. Can't even remember. Yeah. Functions. Functions. Sounds like a good thing. Domain. Yeah. So we had, we had begun talking about domain and range. So in in plain language, could someone tell us what uh, what is the domain? What does that mean? So mathematicians use this language, domain and range. Uh, but I think probably it, it, it's fine. It, language is language, but uh, maybe easier to comprehend language would be something like inputs and outputs. So domain represents uh, the possible inputs, whereas range represents the possible outputs. Okay. So uh, today's the sixth. So let's consider uh, a short example. So I think we did this one last time, but it bears looking at again. Uh, I'll do one just a little bit different. So how about f of x is uh, 1. So that's a nice function. And then how about uh, g of x is x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. OK. So I'd like for you to consider, uh, what would you get if you plugged 10 into f? One. You'd get 1. Uh, no matter what you plug into f, you, you're going to get a 1. What if you plug 10 into g? If you put x as 10 in there, you get 1, right? Because the numerator would be 8, the denominator would be 8 you'd get 1. Uh, what if you plug in uh, 1 million into f? You get 1. What if you plug 1 million into g? 1. OK, so then uh, my question to you is, is, is are, are f and g the same function? They're not. So are f and g the same? function? The answer is no. Why are they not the same? They have different domains. Domains are different. <coughs> Specifically, what's the domain of f? All reals. And then what's the domain of G? Except for 2, right? 2 is the one that causes a problem. So this would be negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. OK. So then uh, I could say, well, what would f look like if we plotted it? So how does f look? It's just a horizontal line, right? No matter what input you provide, the output will be at level 1. So, so f looks like that. Uh, whereas, what does the plot of G look like? What will the plot of G look like? <clears throat> right. 
what's going to happen is that at this position, 2, you can't input a 2, so the function will look like something like that. And so then now the question is, uh, I can phrase the question like this, consider these two pictures. Are they the same picture? Not the same picture. So these are not the same function. Okay, let's have a different example. Suppose that I say that f of x is equal to 1 on the interval 5 to 20, and that g of x is equal to x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 on the interval 5 to 20. Okay, same question as before. Are these the same function? So are they the same? In this case, yes, they are the same. They're the same function. Well, the first question you have to ask to figure out their sameness is whether or not the domain is the same. So is the, is the domain of the two functions the same? Yeah, right, because I explicitly said the domain was 5 to 20 for f, and then I explicitly said that the domain was 5 to 20 for g. So the first question is, are the domains the same? Yes. Okay, so that means that we have to continue. Then the next question, is this true? Is it true that f of x is equal to g of x for all x in the domain? Is that true? It is true, right? So, uh, for example, something that's in here, uh, how about 8? If you plug in 8 into f, you get a 1. And if you plug g, uh, sorry, 8 into g, you get a 1. And if you plug in 9.37 into f, you get a 1. If you plug 9.37 into g, you get a 1. Okay, the only place where g wouldn't, would not give you a 1 is at 2. But is 2 in the domain? It's not. So these are the same. So in pictures, in pictures, what would the plot of f look like? What would the plot of this look like? It's not quite a line, because lines are an abstract thing that goes on infinitely far in two directions. So it's not really a line. Yeah, a line segment. A line segment. So, so it would be like from 5 to 20. So in between 5 and 20, uh, it would look like this. So that's the picture. Uh, the plot of that. Uh, yeah, and that's at level one uh, on the y-axis. And then how does g look? Exact same. So now are those pictures the same? They are the same. So these functions are the same. OK. Interesting. So any questions about this example? So in order for, in order for 
two functions to be the same, it must be the case that their domains are the same and that their evaluations for every input is the same. So all of those things must be the same. <coughs> Good. <coughs> Pardon. Okay. I'm going to select a few uh, points. So I drew five points, <coughs> and now I'm going to connect the dots in a certain way. OK, so what if we have a drawing that looks like this? <coughs> OK, so that's the whole thing. So this is the plot of something. My first question to you. Is this the plot of a function? So how do you confirm or deny that? With the vertical line test. Okay, and then in plain language, can someone tell us what the vertical line test is? Zero or one, right? So every vertical line uh, crosses the plot zero or one times. So, so is that true for this particular plot? Yeah, because over here you can see that there's no intersections and then, oh, there's one right there and then zero for just an instant and then one, zero, zero, one. Okay, good. So the answer to this question, is it a function? The answer is yes. <coughs> okay, next question. Uh, is it injective? So how do you confirm or deny that? The horizontal line test. Okay, and then in plain language, what is this? Right. So every horizontal line crosses the plot. zero or one times. Okay, so how about it? Is it true for this one? It is not. Uh, because no, notably the, the quantifier is every. So notice that this one does zero and that one does just one. But that's not enough to pass the horizontal line test. It has to be for every horizontal line. So for example, that horizontal line crosses twice, and that one three times. So as a result, the answer is no. It's not injected. 
Okay, next question. What is the domain? Okay, so how will we compute it? So we'll take uh, all of these tick marks to be integer uh, values. So how do we compute the domain? Right. Right. So here the idea is that we're going to take a, a we're going to take a vertical line and then sweep it left to right, and we're going to we're going to write down we're going to record every time that we're hitting the plot. So over here, this is too far to the left. We're not hitting the plot. So then, do, 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 do. Okay, right there is where we start hitting the plot. Right there at input negative five. And we do pick it up because it's a solid dot. So at negative five. And then we're, we're hitting it. So yes, 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 yes. And then stop, right? We don't, we're not picking up that point, which is at negative three. So we'd have to write negative three open parentheses. But then we resume exactly there. So it would be uh, negative three, negative three to uh, negative one. And then what else? Mm -hmm. Union two to four. Okay, any question about this one? <coughs> okay, four. What's the range? So now it's in, instead of sweeping a vertical line to check which inputs, so this input is too far to the left because it hits no output. Now the question is, is now sweep all possible outputs. So take your line and sweep a horizontal line from bottom to top. So do we have any outputs down here? No, right, so do, 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 do. Right there, that's the first, uh, that's the lowest output we uh, can, can reach. So that's at negative two, and we do pick it up because it's a solid dot, okay? So then now, we're, yes, 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 yes. Oh, we have it twice. It, what does that mean? Does that, does that mean it's part of the range? <laughs> it is part of the range. All that, all that that means is you can reach this output, negative one, in two different ways. That's what it means. Okay, so do, 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 oh, do we leave the range? Because that open point there, do we leave the range? Opposite of yes. No, <laughs> we didn't leave the range. Why did we not leave the range? Because of that one, right? How many times are we intersecting? Once, once because of that one. Okay, so then a lot of students, uh, the reason why I put that right there is to see if you're going to bite on it. So we're still in the range, still in the range, still in the range. Right now we have three, three uh, intersections, one, two, three intersections. So we're still in the range. Okay, now we have z just one intersection, still in the range though. And then yes, 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 and then it stops there. So that's up to one, two, three, four, five, five. Any question about this one? <clears throat> yes? Not on this example, no. So let's do one more where, where that will be necessary. <clears throat>
You mean, could I make a function that does that with, a, with an expression like a polynomial? Yeah, it would have a whole bunch of terms. Well, not with the breaks. I'd have to do some things, but yeah, it's a function. Okay, so another one. Something like that. Same, same questions as before. In the first place, is it a function? Yes. yes. Because it passes the vertical line test. Yay. Two. Is it injective? It is now. The previous one wasn't, but this one is because notice that every horizontal line crosses zero or one time. So zero times, one times, zero times, one times, zero times. So now the answer is yes. And remember what injective means in terms of machines and things like that. Injective means that if you, if you witness an output you know that there could only be one input that could possibly do that. So for example, if you witness this output right there, if you witness the output negative three, then the only way you could have gotten that, in, that negative three is with this input right here, whatever that input is. That input is the only input that would produce negative three as output. Okay, next question. What's the domain of this? Mm hmm. Okay, very good. And then the range. So, what's the lowest? Where does, where does it begin? Negative four, and we, and, right, but not including it. And then up to negative one, yes, with negative one. And then union, uh, what, three to four? Okay. <clears throat> so any question about, uh, about this one? Question about it. It's Friday. <laughs> College algebra on Friday. <laughs> Whose idea was that? Okay. <clears throat> of x is the following piecewise defined function. It is x squared minus 2 uh, if x is less than 1. And it is negative x squared plus 2 uh, if x is more than 3. Okay. So here's my question. Uh, what is the what is the uh, domain? Hmm. 
So what's the domain? In interval notation. Negative infinity to 1. Union, how much? Three, 3 to infinity. Right, so then notably, notably, uh, for this function, you can't plug in 1. You can't plug in 1 because is 1 less than 1? It isn't, right? And then is 1 more than 3? It isn't. So, so 1 is not, doesn't, doesn't satisfy any of these guards, the guards to the clauses. So you can't plug in 1. Similarly, you can't plug in 1.04 either. Okay, and you can't plug in uh, 2.73. None of that's going to work. Uh, so nothing except these will work. So this this w is where you will be using the first clause, and uh, this one is where you'll use the second clause. Good. Any question about this? Notice <coughs> that the... Um, that the, the domain is fairly easy to figure out. The domain's fairly easy to figure out uh, because you, you, it's just the union of all of these. Okay, so if there were 10 clauses, it'd be that one, union that one, union that one, union that one, 10 unions. Okay, but the range is slightly more complicated uh, to try and figure out. So let's, let's figure out the range now. <coughs> <clears throat> Let's see if we can do it. So in order to do it, uh, I think we'll need to uh, plug in a whole bunch of points so we can convince ourselves of, of what's going to happen. <clears throat> so let's consider this, this thing alone. Right? If we considered just that, just that one, if it was just that, f of x is that, then how would that look? f of x is x squared minus 2. Well, that'd be a piece of a parabola, right? That'd be a parabola. Uh, because if you ignore the minus 2, if it was just f of x is x squared, that's the, the parabola. Right? So, so this is like a piece of parabola, but only, only when you're to the left of 1. And then this is going to be another piece of parabola. Uh, but only when you're to the right of 3. Okay, so we don't need to know this quite yet because we're not quite there. But this thing, this thing is going to be a parabola that, uh, that opens up. It's going to be a parabola that opens up. And this one is going to be a parabola that opens down. And what this function is doing is it's kind of... It's kind of taking the red one, cutting it, and discarding the right side, and taking the green one, cutting it, and discarding the left side, and then sort of surgerying them together to see what happens. OK, so let's see if we can do it. In order to figure out the range, let's, uh, let's make a table of values. So how about uh, negative uh, x here, and then negative 2, negative 1, 0. And then we can't really plug in, uh, we can't really plug in 1. I'll go ahead and write it. Uh, 1, 2, 3. And then now we can start plugging stuff in. Four, five, six. Okay. Seven. Okay. So 
here's x. Half of x. So let's get our stories straight. So if we refer to this one as the red parabola, the red part, and we refer to this as the green part, in the table, which ones are going to be red and which ones are going to be green? So these, these ones right here, anyway, all of those will be red, because when we plug in those x values, those, those will fit into the first clause. OK. Um, which ones will be green? Right, from four, in this table anyway, four onward. Of course, so would 3.01. 3.01 would also be green, but it's not in the table. OK. These ones, these ones we're not going to be able to plug into anything, so I just won't, won't fill in those values. So now, let's, let's plug it in. So negative 2, if we plug negative 2 into that expression, what do we get? 2, two right? Because it'd be 4 minus 2 is 2. And then, <clears throat> how about this one? we plug in negative 1. We get negative 1 because negative 1 squared would be 1 and then minus 2, that'd be negative 1. So this would be negative 1. And then if we plug in 0, what do we get? Negative 2. Very good. Okay, then we can't plug in 1, 2, or 3. <coughs> so what do we get if we plug this in? What do we get if we plug this in? 14. Uh, not negative 14. Uh, not, not 14. It'd be... So it, we'd plug in the 4, square it to get 16. So it'd be negative 16, and then add 2. So that'd be negative 14. Okay, then how about this one? Yeah, that sounds right. So, so 25 negative and then add 2, so that'd be negative 23. And they get much more negative very quickly. So negative 36 plus 2 is negative 34. Negative 49 plus 2 is negative 47. Okay, so any question about plugging this stuff in? <coughs> Okay, well, let's draw a sketch of what's happening. <clears throat> so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative, uh, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. Positive six. Okay, so the red points will be uh, on the left-ish half, and uh, the green points on the right-ish half. <coughs> okay. So uh, if we if we plug in zero, we get negative two. So at zero, I could call this negative two. And then if we plug in negative one, we get negative one. So that'd be up here if that's negative 2. <coughs> and then when we plug in uh, negative 2, we get positive 2. So that'd be up here. And remember, this is a parabola. This is a parabola. So can you tell the pattern that's going to happen? It's going gonna, it's gonna to go up from now on. It's going to do this kind of thing. OK, but remember. Because of the way this function is defined, this is for x less than 1. So here at 1, what is the red, what is the red supposed to do as you get close to 1? So for example, if we plugged in, it's not in the table, but what if we plugged in half? Can you plug half into f? You can, right? 
You can plug half into f. And if you were to plug half into f, you'd get half squared, which is a fourth, and then minus 2, 1 fourth minus 2 is what? Negative 1.75. So it'd be going up a little bit right there. And then now, strictly speaking, you can't plug 1 into f. But let's, let's suspend our disbelief for a moment. Uh, what if you did plug negative 1 in, into that expression right there? You'd get negative 1. So it would be right there, and I'm going to draw it open to signify that we didn't actually get it. So what I want you to see is that this piece of, this red parabola was cut right there, a little bit to the right of its lowest point. And we, we threw away all the stuff on the right and kept all the stuff on the left. Okay, now my question is what does the green one look like? What is, what's the green one going to look like? <clears throat> okay. okay, good. So, and in particular, it will, its business is at three. Okay, so if we plug in four, if we plug in four, we're way down here already, like at negative 14. So, negative 14. And then if we plug in 5, we're even further way down. Okay, so this green, this green parabola is going to continue going that way. Okay, but we've got to take it all the way up to 3. That is to say, for example, uh, this is the point uh, three and a half right there. Could you plug three and a half into this function? You could, right? If you were to plug three and a half in, then three and a half satisfies that. Three and a half does satisfy that. Uh, so three doesn't satisfy this, but if it said less or equal, then it would satisfy it. So let's suspend our disbelief for a moment. What would you get if you evaluated that expression right there at three? you would get uh, negative 9 plus 2 is negative 7. So you'd get something like this. So that's at uh, negative 7. So that's the highest point that the green achieves. What is the lowest point that the red achieves? <clears throat> at negative 2. Okay. So now, before we even started drawing the table, and, befo <laughs> and before, before we even started writing the table or drawing the picture, we set ourselves on a, on a task. What was the task? To figure out the range. We now have enough on the page to figure out the range. So what's the range? Mm-hmm. So the green bit, the green bit goes all the way down, all the way from negative infinity all the way up to negative seven. So we get that bit. But we don't pick up negative seven. And then what else? Mm-hmm. All the way to infinity. <coughs> and we do pick up negative 2. Wow. Interesting. Any question about this? <clears throat> this is OK? OK. Let's have another one. <clears throat> So 
So you could see that uh, a couple things. So in the first place, uh, there is a, uh, what am I trying to say? There is a gap between here. So you could imagine the following kind of problem. You could imagine that, well, what if, what if we wanted to glue together two functions? a red function and a green function, and we wanted to glue them together such that, such that um, they'd actually hit, so that you wouldn't have to do this gap and jump and things like that. What if we wanted to do that? Specifically, what if we wanted to do a question like this? <clears throat> what if we said that, um, we want to have, we want to glue together a parabola and a line so that the result would look like this. So, so we've got some parabola there, and then we cut it, and now we want to glue a line to it like that. Let's see if we can figure it out. See if we can figure out how to make it happen. So here's the question. We'll say that f of x is this parabola. So about x squared uh, minus 3x plus 1 when x is uh, less or equal to 2. And it is equal to mx plus 5 when x is greater than 2. And what I want you to do is I want you to determine the value of m. So that, and I'll explain what I want in pictures, so that it's not like this, so not like this. but rather it looks like this. <clears throat> okay. So how can we do it? <clears throat> Okay, so you're saying, as the, as the first order of business, we need to figure out the coordinates of that point. Okay, I think that's a good, a good uh, strategy. So first, let's find the coordinates of that point. Okay, how can we do that? Plug in what? Plug in two, right? So f evaluated at 2, well, which clause are we supposed to use if we plug in 2? The first one, right? The, the parabola clause. OK, well, that would be, uh, well, that would be 2 squared minus 3 times 2 plus 1. So that would be 4 minus 6 is negative 2, and then add one more, that'd be negative 1. OK. Now what? So, th so that, means, that means what are the coordinates of that point? 2, negative 1, 
<coughs> so the coordinates are 2, negative 1. <coughs> then what? Okay. So, specifically, we need to we need to uh, do the following. We need to take uh, take y is mx plus five and evaluate at <clears throat> that point at x, y is 2, negative 1 and solve for m. So if we take that y is mx plus 5 and plug in those, those values then we get what? Negative 1 is m multiplied by 2, and then plus 5. Okay, then now what? Okay, so negative 6 is twice m. So what's m? Negative 3. <clears throat> hmm, interesting. So what that's saying, what's that saying, uh, is that the picture would look uh, some, some, something like this. Actually, I just got lucky and happened to draw the green line sloping down. That's just, just luck. So what I want you to imagine, it was, it was like this one. We had this line, and what we have control over is m, the slope, the slope. So what we, what we were saying visually, it was like saying, OK, well, OK, this is what we need to do. We need to take the m and we need to <laughs> slope it, turn it like this, so that it'll hit right there. Ah, it worked. <laughs> it hits when the slope uh, is negative 3, and it won't hit otherwise. Good. What's the domain of this function? The, the domain of the whole thing. I've got my notes there. <laughs> All reals, right? Because if you happen to be less or equal to 2, you'll use the first one. And if you happen to be greater than 2, you use the other one. So that, that's all, all numbers satisfy those. Furthermore, because this is an accurate picture, because the picture really does look like this, it really does look like that much. And then negative 3, it's sloping down pretty quick from there. What's the range of this? All reals, right? Because if you wanted to get really large outputs, really, really large positive outputs, you could follow the parabola. And if you wanted to get really negative outputs, you could follow the line. OK, very good. Have a nice weekend.